You're listening to the IMT Show with Mike Sims. Now here is your host. And he said, and we had a discussion about it. And, and he said, do you, does it bother you to play a guy who's a mute? And I said, no. I, in fact, I embrace it because Jackie Gleason was a friend of mine. And he had just won the Oscar for Zigo playing a deaf, dumb mute. And I said, if I ever got a right. chance to play a character like that, that I could put a lot into, I would embrace it. And Nan was a tremendous deal because you had Turn Stamp was a vicious general. Right. Sarah was a man eater. Somebody had to relate to kids, you know. Right. So I took this brutish guy and I played him like a child learning how to walk. And, and Nan, the history of Nan was, he was a brilliant scientist before they lobotomized him. Ah. They lobotomized him because he was involved with Zod and all them, you know, in the takeover of Krypton. So they lobotomized him. And uh, and, and I, I said, you know what? I'm, I'm going to make it like he's learning how to work his eyes like a child, learning how to walk and talk. And it worked out pretty well, you know? Kids, uh, yeah. kids related to non big time, or they just because it was like a child, you know, acting like a child. Well, you know, it, you know, Richard Donner style. That there was, you know, I've seen Superman too, numerous times, <laughs> and um, there was a, there was one scene that always captured me, and it was a real low key scene, and it was after your characters had defeated America and the world, and they were bored to death. There was nothing left to do. And I, I and I thought that was such a an incredibly in, intelligent thing to put in there that what do you do once you've you've accomplished your your ultimate goal? <laughs> and it always stuck with me. Surprisingly, which, that one scene. Which scene are you talking about? And when uh, when uh, your characters are all in the in the White House. Oh and, yeah. And yeah, yeah. and Zod is going through the the, the book and yeah. And they're saying you're 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 king of the world, and he's like I was yesterday and the day before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> I mean, what do you do? You know. No, it was uh, it, you know, it was such a well done script, and it was such and Donner is such a great. I mean, he got a performance from Christopher. You'll never see a better Superman than Christopher Reeve. Yeah, Christopher will be go down in history as the best Superman to ever play that role. He went from Superman to Clark Kent, miraculous, just absolutely terrific. And that was Richard Donner. Yeah. Richard Donner got, if you've watched other films that Chris was in, you know, he'd done a couple of great films, but he was very stiff as a board and stuff. And Donner got a performance out of him that was just unbelievable. And it, it, it just, uh, he, was, he was just a great, and, and the Superman that we did wasn't Superman going around killing everybody was in a dark movie right he was locking people up like the all-american way of, of the court system and everything else and you know it just it fit in with the society of america and him being the very first superhero that america ever had yeah and then when they came and they changed the costume and they took out the all-american way and yeah. you know yeah. different things i say wow man and the pictures got darker and darker and darker well even yeah. even gene hackman playing you know um you know the way Lex he played Luthor. that character was just it was great oh yeah he you was know? brilliant jeans jeans are brilliant i mean you think of the actors that were in superman brando is just incredible brando marlon brando is just a brilliant actor you know and it, it, I, i've been very fortunate in my career to have worked with mitchum jimmy coburn omar sharif marlon brando uh gene hackman i did two pictures with uh marcel Buz i mean a, a host of very talented people. And, and when we did Superman, all those judges that were up there going guilty, guilty. Right. You're talking about Harry Andrews and you're talking about Trevor Howard, some great English actors. Wow. That were that were in Superman. That no one ever just that, that just didn't even dawn on them. Yeah. And then when they did Superman 2 with Lester, how do you cut Marlon Brando out of a picture? Right. But they didn't want to pay him the points. Huh. They had already paid him. The footage was already shot. The first 12 days of shooting were all Brando. They had to shoot Brando to get the money. Hmm. 
the first 12 days with Marlon Brando, I'll tell you a funny story to Brando, Brando. He's such, such a great guy. What a, I loved him. He was, he was brilliant. He's having dinner with Pierce Spangler and the Saul Kinds and Richard Donner. They're all having dinner one night. And, and Brando said, you know, they do work in about seven days. And Brando said, geez, you know, we're really working some hard hours here. He said, you know, it's getting very, very tiresome. Like, you know, maybe we should take a day off. You know, and, and 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 Donner said, "Well, yeah, we could probably." And they're kicking Donner under the table. No, no, Pierce Spangler said, "Oh no, we can, Marlon. We we can't afford to do that because they needed him to get the money. You understand? Right. We can't we can't afford to take a day off." And Brando said, "Well, how much does it cost to shoot for one day?" And they said, "Oh, well, about three hundred fifty thousand." Hmm. So Brando said, "Well, you know what? Let's take a day off. I'll pay." <laughs> they, they almost fell in their soup, you know. <laughs> but he had a great sense of humor. Marlon was Marlon was a great guy. I liked him a lot. Interesting. And he knew my father, so he couldn't he couldn't wait to meet me. I went down to meet him because Brent Mitchum said he's coming to town. Go down and say hello to him. Tell him I said hello. Right. And uh, man, Mar Marlon, Marlon, and I got home like a household fire. He's a New Yorker. So it, uh, what was your, your favorite movie to, to do? Farewell, My Lovely. Really? Well, because of Mitchum, I think, you know, yeah. uh, it was my first film and it really, it really worked very well. And, and I, it was the first mistake I made because Mitchum was very friendly with Johnny Carson and they, they lived, mm. they lived. And then, uh, Oh, Robert. Yeah. Robert, Robert was, you know, when, when, when I first day I went to work ever on a set, yeah, Mitchum uh, arranged for them to pick him up and then to come and get me and drive down to the set. And we had, and I was staying in Hollywood, he lived in Bel Air, and we had to drive all the way downtown to Fifth of Maine because you had to go to an old section of LA because right. it was a period piece and we were shooting on location. And, uh, I had never met him before, other than at a fight one time. Hello, how are you? And they called me up from the desk. They said, well, your car's here waiting for you. The driver's down here in the, in the lobby. So I come skipping through the lobby in the lobby. And there's Mitchum standing against the wall with dark glasses on, his foot up against the wall. And he said, this must be Jackie O. And I said, <laughs> I said, what's up, doc? And we got in the car and you know, he was just, he had me laughing all the way down to the set. And just, just an incredible storyteller. And we got down. And they said, "Get in the monkey suit, and I'll meet you over there." And I'm going to do the very first shot I ever did. And he said to me, "You read that script, kid?" I said, "Read it. I know your role, Charlotte Rampling's role, Harry Dean Stanton, John Ireland. Yeah, I read it, covered it. Sure, I read it." He said, "Good. Throw it in the trash can. Hmm. And don't let me catch you doing what thousands of people in this town do, trying to act." Just be yourself. Right. And then he taught me the eye lines of the, of the camera and never look at the camera, look right through it. And he taught me different technical things, you know? Wow. And it just worked like a trooper, boy. It just, you know, it was a, uh, going to work with him was, 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 it was a treat. You know, he was, Robert was uh, an amazing, he was like Brando. He, every morning he would say hello to everybody and good night to everybody when he left. Right. If he was having steak for lunch, everybody had steak. Wow. You know, and he was just that kind of person. And he just took me by the hand, boy, and just uh, he opened up my eyes to the acting world and, and showed me that, you know, this, this how to be, how to be real and right. how to do it. And then I found out the camera really loved me. And, uh, and that was all because of the way he directed me around. And, and it was, uh, I mean, we, we finished the first shot that I ever done, yeah? And yeah. they started moving the cameras around. And I looked at him, I said, what's what's going on here? What's the deal? He said, you really don't know. I said, no, I'm asking you. What am I asking you for? He said, that's it, kid. That's a whole enchilada. I said, that's all there is to this? He said, that's it. I said, man, I'm a star. <laughs> <laughs> and that became, the, that became the logo of the picture, you know? Right. And, and, you know and the first day when... I had to go and re, we were doing a, a pickup shot and 
he was done. So I, I got done shooting and I'm saying to myself, how the hell do I get home now? He can't be still here. You know, he must have went with the car. How do I get home? So I go down to the, I said to the guy, where, where's, how do I get out of here? And he said, well, the motor pool is right around the corner there. So I go over there and there's Mitchum standing against the car, smoking a cigarette, talking to the driver. And I went over and I said, wow, man, I thought you were already long gone. And he looked at me and he said, can't go home without the star now, can I? <laughs> <laughs> he, he was a tricky Amazing. guy. So farewell was, you know, I enjoyed Superman. Superman made us iconic actors, you know? Yeah. It was a great film. But I enjoyed Dragnet. It was a great film. Yeah. Uh, that? I don't think I did a bad film, to be honest with you. You were uh, you were being considered for uh, the play Jaws and the Bond movies, right? I turned it down. You turned it down. I turned down. I turned five pictures down that Richard Keel did them all, made his career. Wow. You know they uh, they wanted me to do The Longest Yard, right? Which I probably should have done. It was because Bert's a good guy. Uh, and I, don't know, I was doing something, uh, and so I didn't do it. And then there was a picture with Clint Eastwood that um, I, I would have liked to have done because Clint was a super guy. Pale Rider? Pale Rider, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and then they came to me to do a picture about World War II. Um, and I was just, they were going on the break of Superman. And I said, I don't know how long we're going to be on a break and I don't want to get tied up doing something. And I should have done them. I should have done a couple. Of, and the one picture I really should have done, which the Paramount, came really strong after me to do uh, was Silver Streak hmm. with uh, Richard Pryor and uh, Gene Wilder. And yeah. I wish I had done that because it, uh, we had we had a six week break on King Kong where they, they had to go to New York to shoot the ending. Yeah. And we were sitting waiting to finish stuff uh, out in LA. And um, so I had six weeks off and I said, oh, hang at the beach. <laughs> you know, and they were, they offered me the sun and the moon to do, to do the picture. And I really should have done it because Paramount was going to let me go to go up there and would have cemented a relationship with Paramount. Right. But I just, um, I was kind of kooky about certain things, you know. Hmm. And when they came to me to do the Bond movie, I had just signed to do March or Die, which I probably could have got out of. But I was sitting around the corner in a restaurant. It was Mitch's birthday and we were getting him looted. And he and I said, uh, Cubby Brock is around the corner. Bob, he said, I said, he flew over from London right. to see me. I think I better go around. He's, he's sitting with my agent, Meyer Michigan, and they're waiting for me to come around there. And he said, for what? And I told him the picture, the Bond picture. And he said, you read the script? I said, yeah. He said, you like it? I said, no. Because I didn't want to be typecast into just big, dumb guy, you know? Right. And he said, uh, well, then tell him to go to hell. <laughs> I said, well, I better go around the corner and tell him that face to face, don't you think? <laughs> so I went around the corner and I told him, I said, you know, thank you for offering me the picture, but, you know, I've just signed to do this picture in Spain with uh, Gene Hackman and Catherine Deneuve and a bunch of people. And I don't know how long it's going to be. And I don't want to hold up your production. And I tried and I left it up to my agent to get me out of it. So, yeah. And they were, they were, I mean, Cubby Brocky was really, he wanted me to do that picture really badly. Wow. And it would have been probably could have squeezed it in in between Superman and Superman Two, finishing right. two, you know. But um, another foolish move. I probably I don't know. I I just didn't like the character, so I didn't. Yeah. Know. That's uh. I mean, you. I, I think that's probably one of the hardest things, you know, for an actor like uh, any actor is is you know what what to do, and what not to do, you know. I mean, you're... Uh, you know, I, 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 I listened to Mitchum a lot and, you know, and, uh, and, and the other guy that I, I really liked was Brando and yeah. Brando taught me a lot of things about what to take and what not to take. And, uh, Jimmy Coburn was the same way, you know, and, uh, and Omar Sharif was a, uh, what a fun guy to work with. He was, my God, he was a trip. Hmm. Omar was unbelievable. <laughs> we, we were having breakfast in New Orleans doing the Baltimore Bullet. And the women were outside the restaurant, lined up all the way out of, out, of, out of the hotel and around the corner. And I said to him, man, you have this problem all the time. He said, you have no idea, son. <laughs> he said, thank God you're sitting here having breakfast with me. Because <laughs> they'd be coming in <laughs> one at a time. 
I said, <laughs> wow, man. But they thought he was the great Egyptian lover, you know? Right, right. What a nice guy, though. God, he was a great guy. I enjoyed him a lot. We had a lot of, a lot of great stories together. He was pretty cool. Fantastic. But, you know, and that was a great little picture that they just didn't have the money to promote it properly, unfortunately. Well, we shot the nine ball tournament actually at MGM that year. Hmm. So it was a great, I don't think I did a bad movie to be honest with you. Here in the Terror was a good film, probably one of the best Chuck Norris ever did. Hmm. Uh, and Dragnet was, I mean, you could watch Dragnet 50 times and you still wouldn't get all the one liners that Danny Aykroyd threw out. Right. I mean, he was just, he was amazing. What a fun guy to work with. I bet. You know, and, and, and it was uh, Tom Hanks first, you know, that was his breakout movie. Tom's such a nice guy, man. He was a, but we again, we had a great cast. You know, it was a, it was a, it was a good fit. Tom Mankiewicz from Superman. You know? Yeah. So it was, it was, it was a lot of fun, you know. And, uh, and if you can't have fun, why do it, you know? Right. That's a, exactly. So let's see. Um, <clears throat> so what, what's what's on the the board? Oh, next I have for a, you? I have a little picture we're going to do over in Nevada called Red River which is a great horror picture with a really good Faust twist to it. Oh, not okay. like a normal, not like a normal horror picture, you know? Right. It's a great story. They're well-written script. And we're going to do that in Nevada. And then I have a picture, an Irish picture that I've owned for, my God, 40 years. Uh, do you remember the picture of the informer? Yeah. Victor McLaughlin? Well, I wrote another script. I wrote another version of it when I was doing King Kong. Hmm. Uh, and when I was, when I first got my agent, right before I did King Kong, I signed with Meyer Miskin. And he said to me, um, what are you, what are you looking at for your career? And I said, you know, I'm looking maybe to do like a Victor McLaughlin career, you know, because Victor was a hell of an actor. And uh, he said, well, they don't make pictures like that anymore. I said, well, I'll just have to redo the informer. Right. <laughs> and I flew to, uh, to London. I met the writer uh, and he told me where the book and everything came from, the storyline. So I sat down and I wrote a script and uh, Mitchum supervised it. <laughs> and it came out pretty damn good. And uh, and they, I've been up to bat to do it like a half dozen times, but I didn't like the deals because I don't want anybody to, to change it or fix it, you know, and, Right. The music I wrote the song for Elton John hmm. called uh, Simple Man hmm. and he recorded it and uh, so we've got the music to put into it. Outstanding. And uh, we're getting ready I think to set that up and do it. We just came across a lot of money to do that picture and uh, that's another picture I'd like to do before I end my career and uh, the Salt Kinds just came to me with a film that they want me to do uh, Ilya Salt Kinds so I don't know. Yeah. We've got a lot of work, and I got the studio, which is uh, which is going to be a humdinger. Well, I tell you, it's uh, I, I know you're uh, you're uh, helping me in uh, you know, with my my Vicky books and their pitches and everything, and I appreciate that greatly. Um, it's uh, because it's I'm a big fan of yours, and you know, for a long time, and so it's uh, I'm hoping that um you know, that something, something uh, turns out with, with my stuff and that you're in it. And, and, uh, that would be the biggest treat for me. I'm personally. around. Now just give me a whistle. <laughs> you know, I love to work. And I, if, if you're writing something good, man, you know, put me, throw me in the box. I like, you know, I like to play. I like uh, good stories, you know, like, uh, family legacy is going to be huge. Yeah, so it's going to make Boardwalk Empire and Sopranos look like a child's game. Yeah, you know? it's powerful. It's powerful. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to it's going to work out really well. It's a great book, and I got lucky. Yes, you know, I, I I I I talked and and I had a ghostwriter in England, and I changed this guy's whole life, man, because he was a great writer, but he was a ghostwriter. Yeah, and he never and I sent him to the library to look all this stuff up, you know. And, uh, and I brought him into America and introduced him to people. <laughs> he just, uh, he, his whole life, because, you know, you hear all the things that the media and everybody says, then you go to a library and you listen to somebody like me and you look up and, and, it, and the facts are actually there. 
you know, and like he said to me one time, why, how come nobody ever goes to the library and understands the truth of this stuff? Right. Said, because people are lazy. They just listen to what right. the media tries to pound in their heads. You know? Yeah. And that's why there's so many theories out there because they, the pieces don't fit, but, no. you yeah. know, don't have the it's, facts. Uh, it's, and they, yet they, the FBI put the Zabruder, I saw the, the cut frames before they, when they, they doctored the, the film before Life Magazine put it out. And they chopped out the shooting of the, from the driver and a couple other things. And, and you know, when, you, when, when they put it back out because they knew that it was going to be shown and they wanted to make sure that they were the ones that first showed it. And it shows the driver actually turn and take the last shot. You see the smoke come out of his gun and everything, you know? Hmm. So the, the, the truth of the matter is, you know, why they, why they never told the truth about it is because they, they made their own, made it fit their own game plan, you know? Right. Which is very sad because it's, uh, the truth should be told. So, and that's, it, it sounds like it will be in, in with your studio and and uh, and your books. Yeah, we're going to do the best we can, whatever they'll let us get away with, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to the IMT show with Mike Sims. The views expressed by guests are their own and their appearance on the program does not imply an endorsement of them or any entity they represent. The IMT show is an opinion show and not to be taken as serious personal, legal, tax or financial advice. It is meant as entertainment only. IMT show, Mazaroff for Mike Sims is not responsible for ad content. For more information on show schedules and content visit www.mazaroff.net slash IMT.